Hi everyone and welcome. I'm going to rank using a tier list every FTSE 100 stock dividend yield of over 5%. There are 16 of them, so plenty to get through. We're going to use a tier system. So if you're looking to boost your portfolio in these uncertain times, in these choppy markets, it's a very good dividend socks. Look at 16 of them. And if you stick around to the end, a little bonus because I'll show you which of those positions that I've got in my portfolio. But let's look at the 16 and we're going to start right now. Okay, guys, so I've just moved my massive head off the screen so you can see all the data that's going to that's gonna come up. I'm using the data from dividenddata.co.uk and the 5% figure I quote is based on the trailing 12 months yield. Oil mail, which is just over 5%. And we look at their dividend history, it was increasing, dropped off uh, during the pandemic time and it has been reinstated and it's uh, yeah, heading up around about this 5% figure. Now the payout ratio is very important because we want to see how much of the earnings paid out. Now with Royal Mail, the payout ratio has often seemed very, very high. There probably isn't a huge amount of scope to massively increase their dividend. And with Royal Mail, we know that the earnings can be a bit choppy, as we can see from the net income, it's up and down quite a bit, although very well they've been doing during the pandemic due to the extra amount of deliveries and use of their service. And of course, inflation is kicking up now and they'll be exposed to higher fuel prices for their fleet. So that could dent earnings potentially and the comparisons to pandemic years when there were lockdowns compared to what we're seeing now, uh, you know, future earnings may not look as favourable as before. So I'm not um, massively excited about how much more this dividend can go up. Now if we have a look at the share price chart recently, it was at £6, went out £3.30, so it's almost lost 50% of its value. The trading PE is 4, but the 4P is 6, which suggests probably a drop in earnings price targets are over five pound range there might be some caps appreciation in the short to medium term to go with the the nice dividend and a little estimate from simply wall street just as a, a bit of a quick overview looking at 378 there the price to book ratio is 0 0.6 so there could be some value there balance sheet you no know, not a huge amount of debt less than a billion but you've got five billion of equity uh, you know the balance sheet looks okay in terms of cash versus the debt so we head over to the tier list where are we going to put raw mail now, I'm going to put Royal Mail in the B category. But I think with Royal Mail, um, perhaps there's a bit more you know, volatility about their future earnings. There's probably not much growth. And the dividend probably isn't going to increase. Uh, there isn't much debt, so it appears sustainable. And there might be a little bit of capital increase. I mean, you could argue it's moving towards an A. Um, but yeah, let's go, let's go with B for now. All right, next up is Admiral Group. And that will yield just over 5%. And we have a look at the last 10 years. Well, these all exclude special dividends, the yields I've been quoting. We can see that it's been relatively steady and then there's been some gradual increases in the yield over the last sort of four or five years. Now, again, with Admiral, this is a company that presents a potential buying opportunity. August 21, you're looking at uh, th over £36. You're down at £25, £26 now, so it dropped off quite a bit. Of course, this isn't flash device, uh, it's just my own opinion. So do my research for all of these. These are just things for you to research, not a recommendation to buy or sell. Statistics, they've got high P's, quite high for an insurance group, actually. 13 trailing and 17 forward PE. Analyst price target's quite close by, but they're projecting negative earnings growth for the next five years, minus 10%. Simply Wall Street saying they're significantly undervalued. There's a very high price to book for an insurance company or insurance group, they're 5.4. Now, look at their historic power ratio. It's better than raw males. Right? We're looking in the sort of 50 to 60% range for quite a lot of that period. And there's not much debt on the balance sheet, so that's good. And in comparison to the equity, that's fine. And of course, if earnings are decreasing, that may limit the amount that they can actually increase dividend by. Admiral's going into the C tier here for me. And you know, there's a, it's a very, very competitive landscape for them. Earnings are projected to shrink. So Aviva, Aviva's yield, 5.18%. Now we have a look at their payout ratio, and that does vary quite considerably over time, sometimes over 100%, sometimes a lot less. So the earnings has a bit more variability to it. Aviva has been very much on an upward trend in the last two years, when it's down at sort of the two, uh, £2.50 range. We're now at sort of 4.25 to 4.50, so it's recovered well. So they've certainly missed the bottom. Forward PE is N. Earnings are expected to grow by about 15% a year for the next five years. And the analyst price target is around £5. 
70 Wall Street estimates at nine pounds in fair value. My my own figure is more sort of the seven to eight region in the long term potentially. I think nine's a little bit generous. However, there's a price to book of 0.8, so that for an insurance company, and that does suggest it is potentially undervalued. The balance sheet looks okay. Debt was at 10 billion. Debt is now at 7.34 billion. So they brought that down, and yeah, it looks pretty good on the balance sheet there. You can see. So Aviva then of me looks undervalued. It's got a very good management team in place, and the it's a strong dividend that can continue because earnings are predicted to grow well. So I want to put Aviva in the A tier. Interested to hear your thoughts on that below. I know a couple of you watching do hold Aviva, so please let me know if you agree with that. And for transparency, I also hold shares in Aviva, so I might be slightly biased on that one. Right, this is Anglo-Americans' uh, view over the last 10 years. Uh, yield is 5.32%. If you go back 10 years, you had a lot of negative EPS numbers there, and it has become much more positive now. 684 in the, the latest uh, set of earnings. Payout ratio, there's plenty of room to grow there, potentially. Book value is around about 16. And this is a company that does have a lot of CapEx, so we need to bear that in mind. A lot of their money is diverted to, to that activity. It looks like it's been on an absolutely stellar run. Uh, what's that? About 3x in two years. The 8 forward PE getting on the 10. Earnings expect to grow at 9% a year for the next five years. The Wall Street is suggesting they are overvalued. Earnings trajectory is expected to drop off. Now, we're in this kind of commodity boom at the moment, so probably the time to buy this was a couple of years ago. A lot of the run-ups happened then. You would have got a much better yield on cost. You know, debt position, debt to equity looks okay there. 12 billion debts was a big number in absolute terms. And the cash and short-term investments figure is actually smaller than the debt, but there is quite a lot of inventory, and the value of that will vary considerably. So a bit, bit more of a cyclical one. I think, for me, there's somewhere bet between... B and the C tier. I mean, the miners are always going to do well in the very long term. We just need to buy them at the right time. It may not be the right time to buy them now. So on that basis, probably C tier, just on the valuation point. I think if this was a year or two ago, you'd be looking at a much higher tier rating. But we're on to Vodafone next, 5.8%. So you think telecoms, infrastructure, and we have a look at the payout ratio. Yeah, they didn't actually have a dividend there for a long period of time. I mean, look at the, the dividend values here, and pretty flat and even dropped off. A lot of capex as well with this company. It's quite a volatile uh, share price. Old P14, and earnings expect to grow at 26% a year for the next five years, which is pretty massive. Simply Wall Street, on that basis, I guess, reckons they're massively undervalued, with £4 being a fair price. And look at this debt to work, because there's a very, very large amount of debt here, and actually has been declining over time. And that debt takes up a huge portion on the balance sheet. So a lot of money is going to have to go to service that, presumably. I want to drop Vodafone into the D tier here. I, I, just looking at those those numbers and the way the dividend's been acting in the past. There's a lot of risk there, particularly with the debt. So it wouldn't be my first choice uh, out of the ones we looked at so far. It would probably be my last choice. So it's in the D tier. So Barrett Development's house builder uh, in the UK here at 6.37%. And that dividend yield been cranking up quite nicely the uh, virus related in interruption but you know you look at the history earnings per share is going up with a dip for, for the 2020 figures as probably expected they probably had to stop building for a while payout ratio has always been below 50 percent value per share has been growing and there's also a buying opportunity here that they were just uh just a year ago at about eight pounds a share now down at just over five pounds there's been a drop off trading p8 will p6 Analysts are expecting pretty flat earnings for the next five years. Simply Wall Street reckons there are, you know, over, there's over 100% upside there. And that's all price to book slightly below one. Very, very little debt there. That's incredibly low. So that's fantastic news. So it's a, a nice looking balance sheet. So I'm looking at Barrett here and I can't really see a reason not to put it in the S tier. There's, there's no debt. The payout ratio is low and always has been. Stock valuation looks pretty good as well. So that, that's an S tier dividend stock. Right, on to the next one, Antofagasta, if I'm pronouncing that right. And look at this 10-year dividend chart. This is all over the place. Earnings per share, quite variable. Payout, again, therefore, the payout ratio has been quite variable. But in recent years, has always been below 70%. Volatile share price, but it has massive increase recently. PE is pushing 20 for forward PE. And negative earnings growth expected the next five years, negative 29%. 
However, simply Wall Street reckons they're massively on the road. That's that's a huge number, which um, doesn't quite stack up with what we've seen. They're suggesting actual positive forecast annual earnings growth. So uh, yeah, quite different to the Yahoo uh, figures. Three billion of debt, which um, yeah, that's that's okay on the balance sheet. That's that's not that's not too bad. The cash and short term investments are bigger. Going ex dividend pretty soon, April the twenty first. So if you're interested, you need to get a move on. I want to go C's here, here because the, the dividend due to the nature of the company is much more cyclical. It's not as consistent. There's some doubt around the amount of future earnings growth. There's less predictability. So this is going to be a C tier company for dividends. Right, Taylor Wimpy, another UK house builder, getting on for six and a half percent. And again, the trend has been upwards with a pandemic related dip. Payout ratio really, really low historically. It's just gone above 50%, whereas it's been around 30 or less previously. Not much capital expenditure there, so there's lots of free cash flow that they can pay the dividends from. Again, a massive drop off. So going back a year, looking at 183, we're now at 132. Single digit PEs, nine, four P of seven. Expected earnings going at about 5% a year for the next five years. Again, simply Walsh has them pretty undervalued, although that's based a discount rate of 6.3%, which is uh, which is quite low. Egg ratio is around one, so that's okay for valuation. This balance sheet, lovely, is barely any debt to speak of. This, this is excellent, really excellent. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves another S tier here, which is low power ratio, room to grow, consistent, no debt, good earnings, earnings projected to grow a little bit going forward as well. But I think these guys, um, yeah, they can be trusted to, to grow a nice dividend where they can. Okay, British American Tobacco, 6.62%. So this yield has been growing since sort of 2016, 2017. So payout ratio has been relatively high, um, sort of 50, 60, 70% range. Stock price is much higher than it has been over the last sort of couple of years. And those PE ratios are sort of in that 9, 10, 11 range for trailing and forward. And this is suggesting 8% a year growth for the next five years. Simply Wall Street is saying they're hugely undervalued because they're worth £100 a share. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, discount rate 5.5%. So... Maybe it's 50 quid rather than 100 quid. So unless you're looking for a really low return a year, pay too much attention to that value. But it is, it is an indicator. As long as you know what you're looking at and understand it, it's a good indicator. Why is a lot of debt here? And, you know, it was 50 billion. What's that a year or so ago? Now down to 39. So they are cutting the debt uh, quite a lot. It's hard to see in this graph, but it has come down quite a lot. And it's a massive amount on that balance sheet. But look at this dividend payment history. I mean, it's dividend per share has been growing very nicely. I'm going to go B tier here because they've got a really good consistent record. It's a very good dividend, but there is a lot of debt uh, on the other side of things. Um, but yeah, earnings are predicted to keep growing. And they've kept increasing that dividend per share. So B tier for that nice solid.